When asked what you want to be when you grow up, most children reply with the standard firefighter, police officer, teacher. Some go with less traditional things like circus performer, singer, or maybe professional athlete. But we've yet to hear a child answer this with professional farter. Yet, believe it or not, this is actually the way a select few in the world have or currently do make their living. Professional farters are also referred to as flatulists or fartists, putting the art in fart, if you will. Paul Oldfield, better known as Mr. Methane, claims to currently be the only performing professional farter in the world. But this article is not about Paul, but it's about the man who inspired him, the amazing Joseph Pujol. Young Pujol discovered his unusual talent quite by accident. What was supposed to be a typical swim in the sea for the young Joseph turned out to be a life-changing experience. While preparing to dive under the water, Joseph drew air into his lungs by taking a deep breath, but air wasn't the only thing he drew into his body. As he inhaled, he felt icy, cold seawater flowing up his rear end. In response to this most unusual occurrence, young Joseph walked onto the shore, only to discover large amounts of seawater exiting his behind. Knowing this was not normal, Joseph consulted with a doctor who assured him that there was nothing medically wrong with him. Fascinated by an ability that no other boys his age had, Joseph decided to explore his unusual talents and discovered that by contracting his abdominal muscles, he could suck large volumes of water of his rectum and expel it with great force. Joseph continued to experiment and discovered that water wasn't the only thing he could draw up into his backside. He could inhale and exhale air through his rectum at will. In 1892, Dr. Marcel Boudoir actually measured how much Pujol could inhale anally, and it was as much as two quarts of air. Things got even better when he discovered that he could vary the noises coming out of his backside by controlling the speed and force of the expulsion of air, producing musical notes. Naturally, he soon mastered a variety of songs. It was in the army that Joseph Pujol was given his nickname Le Petomar, or Fartomaniac. He entertained his fellow soldiers, first with his water trick, and then with the songs that he played through his magical flute. After his service in the army, he returned to Marseille to attempt a living as a baker. He was said to make some of the finest bran muffins in the south of France. In fact, the street on which he sold these muffins it now bears his name, Rue Pujol. It was in his bake shop that he began to test the public's reception to his other talent. He would sometimes imitate musical instruments using his rectal air and tell customers that he was playing them behind the counter. It was only at the encouragement of friends that Joseph took his unusual musical talent to the stage. At first, he performed at the Boulevard Char in 1887 at the age of 30 and continued performing all over France with immediate success everywhere he went. When he went to Paris in 1892, he insisted on seeing Monsieur Villet, the director of the Moulin Rouge, and he convinced him to let him perform. He was a success there from day one. According to John Barber, who wrote a piece for the stage in May of 1997, he took the stage in a costume of red coat, a red silk collar, and black satin breeches. He began by explaining each impersonation that was to follow. This is a little girl. This is a bride on her wedding night. Small noise. Morning after. Loud rasping noise. A dressmaker tearing calico. Ten seconds of ripping cloth. And this is a cannon. Loud thunder. The audience were at first astounded, then there would be an uncontrollable laugh, followed by more, until the whole audience was wriggling in their seats, convulsed. Women bound rigid in corsets were escorted from the hall by nurses, cleverly placed by the manager so that they could be seen in their bright white uniforms. After signing with the Moulin Rouge, Joseph moved with his wife and children to Paris. Their first child was born in 1885, and then they had a child every two years for the next 18 years. Riding the success and interest in his talents, he embarked on a very successful tour throughout Europe and North Africa. In 1894, he opened his own company called Theatre Pompadour, which included mime, magic, and other variety acts performed by his family and performer friends. He continued to be the star attraction there until World War I broke out. Four of his sons they went off to fight in the war, one was taken prisoner, and two became invalids. This shattered the lovable family man so much that he had no desire to perform anymore. He and his family they moved back to Marseille, where he and his children ran bakeries. In 1922, the family moved to Toulon. There, Joseph set up a biscuit factory for his children to manage. This is where his wife died in 1930, and he in 1945. After his death, medical school offered the family 25,000 francs to be able to study his body, but not one of his children would let them. His eldest son, Louis, is quoted as saying, There are some things in this life which simply must be treated with reverence. Apparently, Pujol's sphincter is one of them.
So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Also, we've got a new merch line. You can find that linked to in the description below. Small selection at the moment, but we're looking at expanding that. If you've got suggestions for me, why not hit me up on Twitter at Simon Whistler, and I will deal with all of those suggestions there. And as always, thank you for watching.